Hello everybody and welcome to Josh Travels. I'm excited to say that this is my very first video and I'm happy to take you through my journey of travels in life. Today I'll be giving you 10 different tricks and tips that you can use to make your travels through the airport more efficient and in some cases more luxurious. Tip number one, when you have a flight coming up, check in 24 hours to the flight. If you do not know how to do this, most major airlines have an app that comes with your flight that you can use and download to check in 24 hours prior. Now what this does is when you download your app and sign in your credentials, you can see your boarding pass, you can change your seats, you can upgrade your seats, you can do what you want with your ticket. Now the advantages to this is when you check in 24 hours prior, at no cost you can change your seats up to a certain point. So if you are sitting coach in the back and they put you in a middle row next to the bathroom that does not recline all the way, you can change your seat to an exit row, an aisle row, or a window row that has more legroom, but you'll have you won't be between two people. You'll have that window that you can look out for the scenery, or you'll have the aisle to make it easy to access the restrooms. You can also move yourself towards the front of the plane, towards the front of the coach section, so you do not have to waste an extra 10 to 15 minutes waiting for everybody to get on and off the plane. If you have a connecting flight, changing your seat from the back to the front can be a huge advantage, because if you only have a 20 minute time window between the flight time that you land and the next flight taking off, those 20 minutes that you'll be stuck in the back waiting for everybody to leave are huge. So if you can, remember to check in 24 hours prior and take advantage of moving your seat further up the plane or to what type of seat you want to move towards. Tip number two. So what you want to do is you want to arrive at the recommended time that the airlines give you, which for domestic is two hours and for international is three. When you're flying domestic, the recommended time is two hours so that you have enough time to get through security, check in your bags, and find your gate. Now this can be an advantage in big airports because if it is your first time traveling, these airports can be a maze and you could get lost pretty easily. But for the most part, if you're a new traveler, show up at that recommended two hours. Not only that, but it also gives the baggage people the time to get your bag on that plane safe, securely, and in a timely fashion so that they do not have to worry about dropping your bags or anything like that. Now for international, that's three hours because you also have to worry about going through the different security lines. Now that doesn't only mean you, that also means your luggage has to go through customs and your luggage is getting checked out. Now why this is important is because this takes more time. If you show up 30 minutes prior to your flight, even if you get to the gate in time, your bag might not. And I've gone to my final destination before and my bag wasn't with me. Obviously I got my stuff back, but it took an extra two to three days for me to get my stuff. And those two to three days, I was living on the same pair of clothes and it was disgusting. So I recommend to you, show up at the recommended period of time so that you do not have to go through the same crap I did. Tip number three, pack and carry on only. If you're going for a one, two, or three day business trip or vacation, there is no reason for you to lug behind a massive bag and have to stay for the check-in and wait for that plane to unload your baggage for 20 or 30 minutes onto the carousel. Now, the other reason you might want to travel light with carry-on only is if you have that breakable computer or something valuable that you don't want people mishandling, you never know what people are going to do when you're not watching them with your equipment. So if you have your own carry-on luggage, you are guaranteed to have that not break because while well, you're carrying it, you're treating your own stuff pretty well. So if you do not want stuff to break and you want to get through the airport a little bit quicker, carry-on only is the way to go. Now, one thing you do need to know about carry-on is there's certain stuff you can't bring on, such as liquids over two ounces. And this is a pretty good example of something you can carry that's two ounces or less. So your little contact solution when they say, get this little travel thing. Well, that's so you can pass your security so they don't confiscate your eye drops, your medicine, whatever it may be. So just something you might want to know. Tip number four. This is something that's kind of underrated and not many people know about. Curbside check-in. If you do decide to take a luggage and you're traveling with a luggage, curbside check-in can be very valuable because there's almost nobody in that line most of the time. Now, people think often you have to have some sort of special credit or be part of the airline super club or something like that. You don't. You just kind of show up with your luggage and be like, hey, I want to check this in and they'll take it for you. Now, obviously, if you got something special equipment or you got to get something special done, you have to go inside. Use curbside check-in when you can use it because it will save you a lot of time. All right, guys, so I just got out of security and this brings me to our next point, tip number five. So if you're in the airport three or four times a year or maybe even more, you might want to do something called TSA pre-check. Now, if you do not know what this is, this is an opportunity for you to skip that long line at the airport you have to go to for security. And to do this, you pay an $85 subscription fee that you renew every five years 
and like I said, if you fly three or four times a year, maybe even more, this is definitely worth it for you to do. And if you fly less than that, maybe even once a year, that's really up to your discretion whether or not you want to pay these $85. But for me, it's worth it. I fly pretty frequently, as you will soon find out by following my channel. And if I were you, I would buy the service. It is usable in any part of the United States. I like TSA PreCheck, and I really think it's worth it. Side note on TSA PreCheck. If you are military, you automatically get TSA PreCheck. If you have your CAC and you have your DOD number on the back, which you should, you can get TSA PreCheck. Tip number six. This is a big one, guys. So there's a couple things that I'm going to be covering in this, and this is more tolerance in the plane. So this doesn't only mean alcohol, but this also means food. Because when you eat a lot of food on the ground, since you're going at a higher altitude, that's not going to sit well in your stomach because your stomach is going to expand based on the altitude pressure and how it affects you. Another thing that this affects is your alcohol tolerance. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. If on the ground you can smash five beers and be perfectly fine, well, if you smash five beers on that plane, those five beers turn into 15 because it's times three your alcohol intake up when you're up in the air. So you just want to know where you're at and what you're drinking because you do not want to get super rowdy on the plane and end up getting arrested and not be able to go wherever you want to go when you get off the plane. All right, so tip number seven, and this is my favorite. So airline rewards programs. If you sign up for a certain airline reward program, this benefits you a lot. And how this works is the more you use, use that airline, the more you spend with that airline, the more they reward you. They have different tiers, different levels, just like any other thing, just like the movies, just like hotels. So you start off at the bottom and you work way, way up with the more money you spend. And what happens when you work your way up is you'll get free baggage. You don't have to pay for baggage when you fly any flights anymore. So you'll get more likely to get upgraded to Comfort Plus or First Class, maybe even Delta One if you're flying international. Uh, you get companion tickets. And what these things do is you can you pay for your ticket and you get somebody else to fly with you for free, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you get the Delta Lounge or United Lounge or any other airport lounge you get to sit in and relax and while you're waiting for your flight they give you food they give you drinks they have an open bar a place to work that's quiet a cleaner bathroom than airports i love this benefit and i think you should use it all right guys so i want to bring you back to tip number seven this is uh me sitting in first class and how i got here is i use my rewards points that i told you about using your guy medallion numbers uh joining the different airline rewards programs and i've gotten this first class seat for free I get my own water, I get a lot bunch of space. I got in the airplane first so I could get situated and set up this vlog camera so I could give you guys this video. I get a nice size screen in front of me. I get a lot of leg space. Um, they'll give me complimentary drinks, complimentary little snacks, food. Um, you get two windows instead of one. It's just better off going to it. So I recommend you, like I said, join these airline rewards programs so you can get all the benefits like I'm using sitting in first class. Tip number eight, talk to the gate agent. If you want something done to your boarding pass or you want something done for your flight, talk to the gate agent about 15 minutes prior to the flight or 10 minutes, just sometime right before the flight boards because they often are able to move you to a seat that you would want. Now, a lot of times they're not going to be able to upgrade you because it's not within their power. They are going to upgrade the people who have the sky priority, which I've explained earlier in this video. Now, the reason why you want to talk to the agents though is because if you're sitting in the back row and you couldn't check in 24 hours prior, and for some reason you're still stuck on the middle seat instead of the aisle that you wanna be in, a lot of times people do not show up to the flight even after they've checked in 24 hours prior to the flight, and you can be like, hey, they're not here, can I take the seat? And most times if you're polite and you talk to the agent as if they're a human, you'll get your seat moved to where you wanna be. Tip number nine. So a lot of times newer flyers tend to have problems with their ear pressure when they go on flights, so one thing that I used to combat this when I was a new flyer is I would use chewing gum. So now what this does is this helps you release the air pressure. So as it builds up, you just keep releasing it and now you don't have ear pain. Now obviously there's other things like over-the-counter drugs, there's chewing gum. You can suck on mints, I've heard that helps too. Uh, but the way I like to do it is by using chewing gum. Okay, so I've just now arrived in DC and this probably brings me to my last and maybe most important point. Have a plan, know what you're gonna do because you wanna know how you're getting to the airport, how long it's gonna take you to get there, if you have to be traffic, and how you're gonna get out of the airport when you arrive at your final destination. You do not wanna be sitting on the curbside for two hours because you did not make a plan on how you're gonna get picked up or spend $100 on an Uber for that matter. Now, another important thing that I'd like to bring up is know where your documents are. You don't wanna be traveling without your ID, without your wallet. Last year, I went to Vancouver with my dad. He forgot his wallet in our house. 
He had to go that entire week with his passport. Every single time we went to a bar and he wanted to drink, he showed his passport. When we did our hotel check-in, he had to carry his passport. And that's an important document that you do not want to lose just because you wanted to get a drink. Thank you everybody for watching my very first video. If you like my content, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to address them as fast as I can.